Hey guys. Um, oh, I forgot the mark off stuff here. Um, there we go. Um, welcome back uh, to Sonic Revolution. We're starting off with our first panel. We, we got with us today uh, Tyson Hess. Hello, everybody. I'm guessing everyone can hear us now. Yes. Uh, Tyson, if you want to uh, introduce yourself a little bit more about your work and what you've been working on and what you've worked in the past, uh, that would be great. Sure. Uh, yeah, uh, my name is Tyson Hess. Um, I've been, I guess I'll, I'll just cover the Sonic related stuff. Um, I've been working with Sega for about, oh, I want to say it's like almost five years. It might be four. I've, I've lost track of time a little bit. Whenever Sonic Mania came out, that's when, so probably <laughs> about four. Um, a little bit before Mania, I guess. Uh, but I, the first thing I did internally with Sega was um, I directed and was lead animator for the uh, intro, animated intro for Sonic Mania. And then immediately after that, we ran on to do Sonic Mania Adventures, and we've been doing uh, cartoons for YouTube internally there ever since, really. Um, before that, I was working on the uh, Archie Sonic comics for their ultimate and sad demise. Um, gave way to, I, to IDW, so, you know, uh, silver linings, but uh, that was my, my first got my start there doing covers and then interiors, and I had a great time, um, and that relationship uh, was so much fun that, uh, yeah, that's what led to all the Sega stuff, and then um, most recently, uh, I uh, was the, um, yeah, it's hard to describe what my title was for the movie, um, I I, I redesigned Sonic, um, but I also, you know, did a bunch of other stuff. I was a, kind of a general consultant on the first one um, after everything had already been shot and mostly <laughs> written, uh, uh, written. So it was like, as much as you can consult after that, uh, you know, we, we did a lot of fun little tweaks and stuff. I helped storyboard a few little sequences. Um, and then now I am also working on the second movie as the storyboard director. Oh, that's awesome. As well as, uh, as, well as uh, doing my other consultant stuff, like the character design and stuff like that. Yeah. Uh, and that brings you up to speed. All right, sweet. So uh, we got our first batch of questions here. I'm going to pull those up. Cool. Um, what was it like? I got a question from uh, Grace uh, Guti. What was it like Hi, working with paramount on designing sonic for the film uh it was um and believe me when i say this uh i don't i don't lie and i don't like say good things about people that i don't mean <laughs> you know so like, <laughs> i wouldn't be saying this just because paramount might be listening and i, I don't think they are but uh either way it was like you, you couldn't uh you couldn't imagine it being any better than it was it was like um i was a total outsider to this production you know they'd been working on this movie for years before i even was asked to come help so um you can imagine in a lot of situations it would have been something where it was like this new guy comes in and they're like all right you know tell us what we need to do and then just get out of here you know like <laughs> we're like you could you'd imagine they could have been like grumpy and had like a chip on their shoulder um but uh, i mean they, they brought me in and from day one, they made me feel welcome and part of the team. Um, and from the top down over there, from all the producers to Jeff and everyone in between, um, it was uh, an atmosphere of like complete collaboration, which is something that I believe in in any production I run as well, where uh, the best idea can come from anywhere, truly. Like, it doesn't matter. Anyone in the room has a right to give their opinion on something. And it might not be a great idea, you know, like, um, but you're always welcome to say it because you don't know it's worth until you try it on. Um, and that was the kind of mentality that they had over there. So it was it was truly collaborative from start to finish. Because like I said, I was brought on originally just to help with the character design. And then through talking through ideas, we started uh, re-storyboarding some stuff and, and doing some like little dialogue punch-ups here and there. And um, that's the kind of stuff that it could have easily not happened if everyone there had a huge ego, uh, which is a real danger in Hollywood. A lot of people out here have, you know, huge egos, but um, it was like, 
some of the most fun work I've ever done in my life just because by the end of it we all felt like really friends um, and everyone in the room felt like they respected everyone else there. So, uh, yeah, I hope that's not a long-winded way of saying that. <laughs> that's just, okay. That's very interesting information <laughs> to know. Uh, yeah. I'm sure a lot I mean, of people appreciate that. that. Being, yeah, I mean, that's what led to being brought back for the second one was when you find people that you've worked really well with, uh, you don't really let them go. And I think we um, we got along so well on that first one that I was – one of the first people that got brought back for the second. That's great. Okay, what we got next? Um, Adamant Z asks, how much have you been involved with the Sonic sequel team? Um, so I'm going to keep my, any any questions about the Sonic sequel are going to be Super tight-lipped. And That's I, fine. I, wish I could say more. Yeah, I, I <laughs> completely yeah, understand that. I... <laughs> yeah, I, I do respect my employers, and not just them, but yeah. you know, like everyone on this film. Uh, I, and I respect just... those NDAs and stuff like that. So, <laughs> yeah. and, and you know, even if it wasn't just on paper, it's like uh, I'm, we want to let the movie speak for itself. Um, but like I said, I, I my title this time is storyboard director, um, and uh, in animation. Um, that title uh, usually it was known as like head of story, uh, which is, you know, like, so basically it's someone that's involved from the very beginning till, till very late. And that's kind of just all I can really say. Um, Cause I don't, there's, there's a tricky situation with me in these Sonic movies where I don't want people thinking that I'm like making the whole thing myself, which like, that's the way the dialogue <laughs> like feels like it works down to sometimes with anything I'm on um, it's like this is truly like is this something being made by like 400 500 people right like yeah uh, there, there's a lot of great stuff happening from a lot of different people um, and I am just part of it uh, but yeah that's that's my title and I, I'll just leave it at that and, and my personal opinion I think a lot of people just see you as, a, as just a hero right now just from the redesign and and the fact that you you're pretty much from the community and you just like elevated yourself through from the community to this professional standard. So I think a lot of people look uh, up to you about that. Well, thank you. I, I I'll say that um, I was elevated. <laughs> so you know a lot a lot of help uh, people helped me do any of this um, and get to be in this position at all. So I'm I'm grateful to them first and foremost and all the people that like the stuff that we made enough to make noise about it um because that's how more got made so uh, I, I don't really consider myself particularly special in any way <laughs> it's just like, like somebody's got to do it and yeah i just happen to be the guy in the <laughs> that was here to do it uh and i'm i'm lucky and i'm happy that it was me um but uh yeah thank you of course all right um The Jackhammer, this is this is probably just another diversion of the similar question. Uh, how does it feel designing the Sonic movie design? Um, yeah, so, uh, I mean, for the first one, it was it felt great. I mean, it was really it was, it was quick. Um, I can't obviously still, even though this is the first one I'm talking about, I still can't say too much about it. But it was really, um, it was not as hard as I think a lot of people think, like, uh, you know, making the switch. And um, that's as much as I can say, but I mean, it was like, I, I, I was brought in and within 48 hours, we had basically figured out the direction we wanted to go. And then from there, it was just figuring how to implement him into the movie um, while not breaking the whole thing apart, which is a real concern because like, I, you know, the whole thing was filmed, right? Yeah. Um, and so actors were talking to, the old version of the character, and um, th there's something called eye lines in mm -hmm. uh, um, actor in film, right? Where like you know, it's just like where someone's looking. Um, and so, no matter what we did with this design, those eye lines had to match, right? So, like Sonic couldn't just get taller all of a sudden because then people are talking to his nose or his chin. Um, you have to design things around what was already there, and that was one of the the biggest hurdles. But even so. Um, yeah, it was, it was a process that kind of just started and, and kept running and they figured out how to make it work within the timeline with the, the delay and it was 
not as much of a nightmare as it might have seemed for me <laughs> Like the the extra the extra time added on the end made sure that nobody was really like crunching to death, which I know is a concern for a lot of people. And it's, oh, it's yeah. a concern that I ha you know being like this is why well, this dialogue is so weird to me. It's like I'm usually the one that's like being crunched, and like I wouldn't like stick around if that was happening to other people, right? Like um so like which is not to say that there weren't long hours for a lot of folks, but it wasn't some nightmarish you know cracking the whip <laughs> of a bunch of a uh, poor animator. Yeah, I, I'm. I'm so. That's. I'm so glad to hear that, especially coming from you. So that that's good to hear. Um. Oh goodness, we got we got more of an older school uh, question here. Uh, MC Gemstone asks, "Where did the idea for Sonic's Big Fat Adventure come from?" Oh jeez. Um. <laughs> To say that it was like an idea that came from somewhere is really generous. It's like, <laughs> it wasn't like I planned it out and I'm like, oh yeah, this is I'm gonna this part's gonna happen here and this is gonna pay off in this arc later. Like it was just I really just thought it would be funny if uh, Eggman was taunting Sonic about turning his friends into robots. And so like I did I did those four panels. I took reference of my own face with like Eggman going, you know, like, like doing that and just kind of drew over it. Um, and then like at the time I was doing a, an original webcomic series and I was just doing like I just did this one four panel Sonic thing on the side, like as a goof for like Twitter or DeviantArt or wherever I was posting at the time. Um, and of course, as everyone knows, when you do anything Sonic related, it just explodes for no reason at all, it seems. <laughs> um, so it just ended up being really popular, and I was like, all right, I'll bite, and I'll do a couple more. Um, but then after five, I was like, that's enough of that. <laughs> like, I, I, you know, I, they're funny at the time, and I think they still have their, their charm, I guess, now, but it's not the kind of thing that you can just keep doing forever. It was really just like, what's the dumbest faces and the stupidest jokes I can do right now? Um, but it's not, it's obviously not like how I see the Sonic franchise. So it's not something that could run for a long time. Right. It's just a joke that, uh, catches fire and then it lives way longer than you thought it would because, <laughs> you know, nobody, nobody, like when somebody makes a meme, nobody thinks they're making a meme, right? Like, yeah. that's, it, it wouldn't become a meme if you were trying to make it, right? <laughs> like, it's just, you, you do something that you genuinely think is funny, and then other people find a way to keep bringing it back. And like, like the audience creates the memes. Truly, it's like whoever creates the drawings of the original joke is just making a joke, and then like meme status is something that the creator doesn't own. Like, yeah. that's the the world does that without asking me. Um, but uh, I mean, it was. It was nice to make something that people thought was funny for so long, uh, but that was really as much thought as I put into it. <laughs> yeah, it it, it <laughs> seems like you know you do something without thinking, and then it's just like know. it's the stuff you do without thinking that lives the longest sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> gonna ask that one that one's, that one's already been asked uh, oh uh here's a good one from buzzy uh when you're not creating artwork what are you doing uh right now there isn't a time when that isn't happening <laughs> like um so right now without saying what they are uh i'm like directing like three different projects at the same time, which is mostly due to a scheduling conflict that I did not plan on. Oops. Not want to happen. <laughs> but such is life. Um, <clears throat> just happened to find myself in this situation. And I've, and I've been in this situation for a couple of years, so there's obviously something I'm doing wrong um, <laughs> with my scheduling. <laughs> but I think for the past few years, it really has been a situation where um, my relationship with art has changed drastically from where it was a few years ago, where um, drawing is now the le 
least of my hours with work. Like it used to be back when I was in comics or when we were starting out with the animation stuff, it was like I had to draw everything and I got to animate all this and do this and this. Um, directing is a different story where I am I am needed to like draw red lines or corrections on stuff a lot of times or you know for movie stuff I'll have to do paintings and drawings and stuff like that. But most of my time is spent reviewing other people's materials, which is um, it's fine. It's it's a different relationship with art. It's like the reason why someone directs something is because they they can direct other people's work like that. Um, but it's just it's much more collaborative, and um, it, it takes up much more time because there are so many moving parts that I think from the outside. You know, people can say over and over again that, oh, making TV and, oh, making movies are hard work. And it always just seems like kind of fluff. It's like, oh, okay, well, how hard is it to make TV or how hard is it to make movies? Like, it's really <laughs> – like, I've had a lot of jobs, right? Like, I've, I've worked retail. I, I worked in drugstores and, and Best Buys and clothing stores. I've, I've, I've unloaded trucks and stock shelves, and I've, I've worked in comics, and I've worked in animation. It's like – Truly, like, nothing compares to the amount of hours I have to put in to make one cartoon for YouTube, which is, like, a pretty small production. But when you have people, um, like, all around the world putting their work into it, overseeing that and making sure it comes out right, it, it just takes way more work than you think. Because I think you watch the finished thing and you think, oh, well, that, they just they made that. It was like a straight line. They had a story. And then they did some drawings, and it's like it's just like they just started and they finished and they went. But like that's, it's really never how it goes. It's uh, it is a non-linear process, and so um, guiding it and making it work and come out of the end is a job that has an infinite amount of hours um, because there's always something that you can do better, and it's just up to you to know when to chill out and let it go. Um, and I don't, <laughs> I'm not good at that, uh, so I. Uh, I just I work and I work and then sometimes I stop. Um, but one hour a day I exercise uh, and you know I have meals with my wife and uh, we work right next to each other all day. So that's a lot of how our hours are spent together are just working next to each other, which is uh, great that we have that relationship and that it works for us because in any other relationship it could be very uh, taxing, but uh, we we love it and yeah. Um, so I don't know what I do when I'm not working. Uh, I, I worry about not getting work done. Yeah, I, I know that feeling all too well. It's just like if I'm not yeah, I'm busy. Sure. <laughs> as, some, as someone that's running a convention, yeah, there's never not something to do, right? There's, there's always, even if there's not something to do right now, you're always worrying about what you need to be worrying about in the future. Like there's always something waiting on the horizon. Oh, yeah, for sure. <laughs> All right. Um, Mr. Chaos asks, so Mr. Hess, how are you able to portray the character so well in the IDW comics? Uh, well, that might not be a question for me. I haven't done any interior work in the IDW. I was, was going to um, say, I don't remember you doing any real work on IDW. Which I am happy to clear up at this time, by the way, for anyone that has any misconceptions, there are so many good Sonic artists out there uh, on official media like IDW um, and I don't know if there's anywhere else, but uh, yeah, I guess the comics, um, and they're, they're doing great work, and uh, I can tell you, I'll, I'll go ahead and answer for them, um, <laughs> they, they do the characters right because they love the characters, and I think that's what is... Um, working strongest about the Sonic franchise right now is that this franchise that's been around for 30 years. And at this point, there's no reason for the people making this stuff to not love it to death. Um, and I think the stuff that works the strongest works because of that. Like, they grew up with it. They know the ins and outs of it. They know not just the stuff that worked, but they were around for the stuff that didn't work. Mm -hmm. um, and they've uh, seen all those ups and downs, and despite all that, um, have stuck around because they love the characters and they love the stories and they love the franchise. Is such like a word, but it's like it's what it is. Sonic is it's a franchise, 
Um, but the people that are making this stuff over at IDW, like they just genuinely uh, love it, like me, and um, that's why you can you can sniff it. Like you can you can smell when someone is just doing something for a paycheck, or if they were just hired to do their job and they don't know anything about anything, and it's like, okay, sure, here I'll do a Sonic cartoon for you, whatever. And it's like, <laughs> I, uh, <laughs> where, where do I sign? Um, <laughs> but I, yeah, the. the the IDW folks is like there isn't a single person on that book that just doesn't like or love Sonic to death, and that's why uh, you can tell uh, when it hits hits it right. For sure. So I got a question from our old friend Gigi. Um, Ooh, which one? I know. A uh, Gigi uh, Dutri. Gigi oh. D. Hi Gigi. Anyway, she asks. Um, Hi, Tyson. Uh, can you tell us your experience of visiting Sega of Japan on your first go? Hope you had a good one. <laughs> so I have never actually been to Sega of Japan because there was a time when it was like looking like it might have been possible, but then the whole world ended, right? Like, oh, um, yeah. Like, <laughs> the pandemic, right? <laughs> um, uh, I have, I've been to Japan a lot. I used to live in Japan, um, and that's one of the reasons why the relationship has worked so well um, with with me and these cartoons is that you know we work with um, Izuka san which is it's so weird to put honorifics but it's like you're, you're supposed to at work you're supposed to say Izuka san at work um, so it's a habit now uh, but like we work with with Sonic team and Izuka san like basically every day on these cartoons and um, on uh, on the first production that we did, which was the Mania intro, there was a situation where we got into a kind of a little bit of a, a, a pickle with um, just the way something had worked out. And I, I had lived and worked in Japan, you know, for a long time, and I, I, I'm fluent in Japanese. So when we hit this snag, I, I went into the office and I did like my full apology in Japanese. And I think that was something that he had never seen happen before from a contractor because he usually just. Who speaks Japanese, right? Like in, <laughs> in uh, cartoons, like not a lot of people. Um, so, but you know, I, I went in there and it was just out of respect and out of apologies for how something had happened. Uh, I went in there and I, I did the whole the whole thing, and I think that kind of uh, was, even though it came out of a difficult situation, it was, was like cemented the relationship where it, it was. It became clear that no matter what happens in the future we don't need to go through a translator to communicate. Like, if I have something that I need to talk to with Sonic Team, because um, we work with uh, Jun Senelue a lot mm -hmm. for, he helps out with our music and stuff, um, and uh, just other members of Sonic Team and Sega Japan, uh, it's, uh, it's very helpful to not need a translator if you really want to communicate something, especially when you're trying to, like, pitch a story and there the, like, emotional aspect of it. Um, and it works out well, and, I mean... Uh, yeah, so I, I have yet to be able to visit Sega Japan, but uh, one day when hopefully everyone is safe and sound and we can put all this nastiness behind us, I would love to go and visit. Yeah, hopefully you'll be able to make it someday. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Oh, here's a good one uh, from Les Ned. What are some different challenges you faced doing, uh, you faced, uh, doing work on a feature film as opposed to shorter films? Hmm, I gotta think about that one because I guess my role. No, sorry, I'm, I'm thinking about what I can and can't say here. Because I can't say I can't say anything about movies. Like, like, basically, I asked for clearance about what I could say, and it was, like, your title. <laughs> like, cool. <laughs> there you go. Um, uh, like, on the first one, I, it's, it's hard to say what difficulties I faced just because my job on the first one wasn't like any job I've ever had in either short form or uh, TV. Um, like, I, I think the, the difficulty is is kind of maybe coming into a situation halfway through and, and all that that entails like like i said a little bit earlier about like 
when when footage is already shot, you have to work around the footage that's already shot. You can't just do everything you want. Like, you know, you can't just make Sonic's hands gigantic because you've already shot footage for it. You can't just um, rewrite things because, again, it's like it, it's already made. You're putting a polish on it, but you're not starting at the beginning. Um, but, uh, yeah, it's, it's kind of a question that if I could talk about movie... Two, I'd have more to say, but it's just like I can't say anything about that just yet. Um, I'll say uh, just broadly, because Sonic was the first feature I'd worked on, um, it is uh, somehow even more fast paced of an industry than TV. And like TV feels like a whirlwind, and TV feels like it's nonstop. You're like, gotta go, gotta go, gotta go, kind of thing. Uh, but uh, movies is just like, there's so much more money at play at every given minute, and decisions have to be made like now. There's no time for pleasantries sometimes. Sometimes a guy will just call you and be like, what do we do? And I'm like, uh, this. And he's like, bye. And he's like, <laughs> cool. <laughs> and it's, um, it's just kind of the way it is. Uh, and it, you get used to it. I, I think um, anyone's first time through it, they might think like, wow, everyone's people can be a little rude, you know, but it's, it's not, it's just like, there's, there's so many parts in the movie and it can't stop, um, that you just have to get used to the rhythm of, uh, but I, again, I, I, I loved it. Great time. And like I said, everyone was like really nice to me, <laughs> like, like way nicer than I thought anyone ever needed to be. Like if you walk into a, a room with a bunch of like millionaire producers and, uh, you think everyone's gonna be like, "Who's this nerd?" Right? <laughs> but they're like, no. Like, they were just like really interested in what I had to say the whole way through, um, and that was fun. All right. So earlier, I asked how uh, I uh, it was asked, uh, "How did you feel about working with Paramount?" So Dylan B asked, "How did it feel to work with Sega for the first time?" Um, good. It was. Uh, it was another thing where it just it happened so fast, you don't really have time to stop and process what you're actually doing. Um, cause it is the kind of thing where when we did the Mania intro, this was something that hadn't been done since, like, Riders, right? Like, Riders was the last game that had, like, a 2D intro. Um, and that was, like, production IG, right? So, <laughs> it's, it's like, the last two people that did, like, really big 2D intros for Sonic was, like, Toei and production IG... And um, then it was like me and like some friends. Like, uh, you want to make a cartoon for Sonic? I'm like, okay, cool, sure, uh, <laughs> yes. We'll, we'll we'll certainly try. Like, I'm, I'm glad that it all worked out. But I think uh, to, to go back to the question, it was just I wasn't I wasn't thinking about it because I didn't have time really. Uh, I think internally. Maybe there was a part of me that was like really giddy and like <laughs> working for Sega, uh, but um, I, I think when when you get put in situations like that, um, keeping a level head and like just enough level of detachment so that you don't lose your cool is is important. Um, that's something that I've I've picked up from working on other big projects or like meeting big famous people. It's like um, you kind of always gotta just take a little bit of perspective and think like, yes, this is like working for Sega and like, you know, it's like technically this is the kind of thing that everyone says when they're teenagers, very few people ever get to do, right? Like, and so this is like a huge deal and uh, it's a life goal and a dream and all that stuff. But like when you're in the moment, you just gotta think, okay, this is a job and I'm being paid to do the job. Uh, so let's get it done. And And I think that's, where my head was, you know, like after the like first conversation happened, no, like I walked out and I talked, told my wife like what was happening. I was like, oh, she was like more excited than me, because um, <laughs> I think again, I, I'm trying to like stand five feet outside of my body so I don't lose my head about it. Um, uh, but uh, yeah, I mean, it was it was again another process where it's, it seems like it's going to be big and scary, but once again people just treat you really nice and like that's kind of all like all it takes for you to get through something like everyone at sega the whole time was really 
kind and supportive about the whole thing. Uh, and even more so after the main like intro ended up being a success, everyone was like, oh, let's keep doing this, I guess, because we're having fun. Um, and it just, it like, from there, just kept on rolling. And so I never really had that moment where I got to, like, like quietly freak out about it like it just like before i knew it it had become my job um and now it's just like my day-to-day -day. and that's it's like it's life it's like i wake up and I, I work for this company uh but uh yeah hopefully that answers the question i'm sure that that was I, that was a great I, answer <laughs> i do tend to ramble that's okay <laughs> that noticed. you know <laughs> Uh, you may or may not be able to answer this. This is another movie-related question from Cam60. Mm -hmm. Was there a particular reason that you made the design choice to keep the new version of Movie Sonic's arms blue, or was that for practical reasons? I can't talk about that. Okay. <laughs> That's fair. Uh, that is fair. Uh, don't feel bad for asking a question. It's a fair question, but I can't talk about that. And that's all I can say. I'm okay. Sorry. You know, it just, I, I figure you wouldn't be able to answer, but I figured I'd asked anyway, just to see. It's, it's worth a shot. If I, if I had like a Paramount representative, like sitting here with me and, and he like, you know, <laughs> like one of these, uh, I, I feel more comfortable about it. Right. I think, uh, I'm trying not to say anything that's going to make headlines anywhere, right? Oh, today. yeah. Um, yeah. So, uh, yeah, the I'm last thing you need is happen. for somebody from Stadium or uh, Tales Channel to be picking right. up on this. I, I don't want any articles. Please, God, if anyone is out there watching this, don't write any articles about anything I say today. Can I just... Can I just... You hear that, Stadium and Tales Channel? You're on notice. I love, I love Stadium. I love Tales Channel. Just please... <laughs> Not today. <laughs> okay. Um, Alley Cat asks, are there any other projects you work on that aren't Sonic related? Uh, yeah. Um, I think I can talk about. Uh, I'm directing a, uh, a short animation with a studio called Tycho Studios, um, which I can't say, like, anything about it course um and i don't know when it'll be released but i've been working on it for about a year and a half and it is it is a big expensive cg animated short um which was my first time directing cg animation um and it was really difficult for a long time but it's it's all coming together now and i think it's going to be really fun and i hope people like it um it's uh, primarily being made for a Chinese audience, but um, I have subtitles and stuff for everyone else to watch. And I don't know, again, I don't know when it'll come. Um, but uh, yeah, that's, that's been occupying my life. Like, I mean, that was a, that's a full-time job, and then I'm also doing two at the same time, a full-time job, and, uh, that's, and then there's more Sega stuff going on. Um, so there's been a lot of stuff happening. But that's the only like non sonic thing that I've had time to do in memory. Uh, and I'll be sure to keep talking about it on Twitter when it comes out, but that, I can't really say anything else. Right. It's, like, <laughs> it's pretty secret. Yep. Uh, another movie question from Roger Dat Soldier. Um are you excited for the Sonic movie too? And also did you meet up in person with the actors? Uh, I am very excited for movie. There's another one where I'm like, oh, the things I want to tell. <laughs> um, <laughs> but I just can't. Uh, I, I will say, this is again, like I said, at the very head of this thing, I don't, I don't both smoke. All right. Like when I really feel strongly about something, I'll tell you. If I don't like something, I'll be like, yeah, it's going to be fun movie right like i'll try and like like get, like play it off but like legitimately uh sonic movie 2 is gonna be good <laughs> <laughs> like 
I, I it's gonna you're gonna I, I think you're gonna like it. I really think so. I um I can't God, I can't say anything else. But, I, uh, yeah. Yes, I'm very, very excited for a movie. This is like I am so desperately hoping that everything's like back to normal ish. Um with movie theaters so that, you know, people can go safely sit in a theater and they'll feel comfortable doing so because the only thing I'm going to say about movies is that you want to see it on a big screen. <laughs> yeah, it, it's so, really funny because um, uh, I remember uh, when the first movie came out, uh, uh, Revolution actually planned two huge uh, meetup events. Uh, we we mm-hmm. actually did a simultaneous uh, event, one for Orlando and one for uh, L.A. and Turns out that the LA meetup, uh, uh, some of you guys had actually shown oh. up at that. That was that was a total coincidence, by the way. <laughs> um, it is nuts that everyone was in the audience there. Like I had no idea that Ben and Jeff were going to show up, and I think like, Toby was there. Um, I think uh, Patrick was there too. Um, that was just that was like one of my three theater viewings that I I went to go see Sonic at. Like. Um, we were just randomly like, oh, let's go to, I think it was, it was City Walk, right? Um, yeah. We were just like, like, let's go to City Walk and see Sonic again. Because uh, I think my, my friends, Frank and Becky, hadn't seen it yet. Um, so, we, like, it was truly just a coincidence that we were there. I had no idea that everyone was going to show up. They didn't know that I was going to be there. And none of us knew that it was a theater, like, full of Sonic fans. <laughs> so there was some, there was some uh, serendipity <laughs> happening that night that it all worked out like that. Um, yeah, and I I got so mad because you know we 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 had like you know we had a decent meetup at uh at the Orlando event, but it's like I found that everyone had showed up at the uh, LA event. I was like, okay, I'm disowning Revolution West. <laughs> <laughs> uh, just one of those coincidences that worked out well for everybody. That was that was a lot of fun though. Yeah, I mean, that that was like every um every theater viewing that I went to was a good one you know, where people were laughing and having a good time and everyone went nuts over tails, like in every viewing. But that was the one where, um, cause you know, like, like Jeff and Ben and them, they had gone around to a few theaters to do that as well. Um, but I think that one was, uh, the first one where they heard what sounded like, uh, a touchdown in a football stadium when tails showed up. I mean, that was cacophonous applause <laughs> like really it was a a huge eruption of a reaction um from people in that theater uh and and they heard it outside and they loved it um so that was a great moment i think every every time in the theater it was a big reaction that was my favorite part of, of any theater it's just people had no idea it was coming um and like that sincere Re- reaction is something you don't get to experience a lot, right? Like sincere, um, like not just surprise, but but joy at thought that oh my god, I love tails and there he is, and I didn't know he was gonna be there. It's like, <laughs> it like everyone loves him, and then now he's here, and it's it was just like yeah, every time it, it uh, gives you goosebumps just because uh, again you're, you're hearing a bunch of people not just react for the sake of reaction, but be happy about something and that's uh it's a great feeling it truly is that question got away from us that's okay <laughs> but, uh, that's 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 okay um uh yeah zeo silver asks what was the strangest reference picture you had to find for a project like something that had no relation to the final project final product or just straight up strange <laughs> oh man i feel like this is that kind of question that someone asks you when they've had to do something really weird right i want to hear what this person had to look up for reference for a project because it sounds like they have a great story but, like i'm trying to think because i i know i know there have been instances where i'm like dear lord purge my google history after this one you know um <laughs> Uh, but I can't, I can't in the moment like think of the one that was so big, right? Um, I wish I had a better, better answer than that. But That's fine. I'm gonna, start, <laughs> I'm, sure. I'm gonna start remembering my stories. Yeah. Oh man. Uh, Starvale asks, uh, 
What are your top three favorite Sonic characters to draw? To draw? Mm-hmm. I mean, maybe I'll just start at the top because that's easier. Like, Sonic is number one. Um, he's just got the most, like, innate potential for cool poses, you know? Like, um, everything about him is just built to be posed dynamically. Uh, like, the, the big hands, the, the skinny arms, all that stuff. It's like, um, there's a flow to him that like one of the reasons why i think his silhouette is always so strong is not just like you know everyone thinks about sonic silhouette and they think about spikes and, like the spikes are a big part of it but the reason why sonic silhouette is so strong is because every every part of him pops on its own right like so when when his arm is out here it's like this almost fades away to draw attention to this because his hand is so big and those fingers are so meaty and you know all that stuff there it's like that's what makes the dynamic wet. It's it's the push and pull of shades. It's not just the presence of some, like presence of repeating elements like, uh, like spikes in his in his, on his back and like those same triangles are present in his ears and to a lesser extent those triangles are present in his shoes and stuff. Um, but uh, what makes a character feel so dynamic is that those big shapes catch your attention and then less important things uh, are present that lead your eye to the next big cool thing, right? So it's like for Sonic, you're paying attention to all this spiky stuff up here, and the arms are not like not really important. The arms are just like there to be arms, but then Sonic's hands are always cool. Like any any Sonic artist like that is into cool dynamic drawings is always drawing like weird like hands. Like hands are like a big Sonic thing because it's just it's it's a part that like no other cartoony characters usually don't have that much like detail or expression in their fingers the way that people really put into Sonic pose. Hands are a big part of what makes a cool Sonic. So that's why uh, yeah, he's just like. Um, number two. Like, my favorite character is Knuckles, but it's hard to put him in my top three because his head is a nightmare. <laughs> I had to do, on the mini intro, I had to basically, if I didn't animate the shot with Knuckles, I would have to go back in and redraw a lot of Knuckles' heads for the rotation. One scene in particular, where the animator did a great job on the shot, um, but it, it's like the one where he hops out of a ring and lands on it and looks at it before Sonic pops out and knocks him off. Like he does, like he has this land, and he does this, like head turn and adjust kind of thing, <laughs> and it's like, like people think like drawing knuckles is hard, but like try animating this with with <laughs> whatever his that football shape that he's got going on there with his like with his cheeks and his like yeah, um he's like he's tricky, but like in his own way that does make him fun. I'll put him at number two. This question will last all day. Who's number three? Uh. Number three. I do love Metal Sonic. Metal Sonic is like you think he'd be um, annoying to draw because everything has to be more precise, uh, and in a way that's true. But I love you know like a big part of what I like to do in cartoons is expression, and Metal Sonic as a character um, isn't allowed to move his face usually like in the cartoons like whenever we, i try and do anything expressive with this i always get the note it's like no so metal sonic's eyes don't move. like they don't ex change expression or anything like, like only in very rare circumstances um so for me the the fun of metal sonic is trying to get him to emote without being able to do anything with him right so it's, it's all finding ways in the pose to work um, in Mega Drive, I started doing this thing where um, his eyes uh, operate like um, camera lenses, so they, they constrict to look angry, and um, it's like a little bit of fun stuff that we can do there to get some emotion out of him. Um, but yeah, Metal Sonic's like surprisingly fun to draw if your goal is acting.
because uh, he's just it's like squeezing blood from a stone, as they say, right? Like it's really hard, but when you, you get it, um, it's really satisfying. Cool. Um, let's see, where was I? Okay, I gotta be more choosy with the questions now because we're gonna get low on time here. Uh, sure. This is this is an interesting question for from I Ty Tyronite. Uh, hi Tyson, I'm just curious what school and education you pursued. Did you wind up taking something that inspired you to jump to this career, or has it always been a dream goal? Um. Uh, first question first. I I do have an animation degree from um, the Savannah College of Art and Design in Savannah, Georgia. Um which is uh, a college I went to basically because it was the closest art school where I grew up, which is North Carolina. Um, and uh, I, I liked my time at SCAD. Ish. <laughs> I won't get into all that. Um, but that's where I got my education from. And there wasn't anything there. I think I was one of the, not one of the few, but I felt like um, a lot of people went there to try and figure out like what they wanted to do to do in art like a lot of people knew that they liked drawing or they liked art or they liked movies but they didn't quite know exactly how they wanted to be a part of that process so um when i was there in year two there were still a lot of people thinking you know what do i actually like and people would switch paths all the time they'd go 2d and they switch to 3d i had a lot of people that came in um that were looking to get into animation and then they realize they really don't like drawing 30 pictures just to see one second of action so they're like mm, maybe i'll just do comics instead um much more efficient um and uh for me i always knew i wanted to be making cartoons but um i actually didn't get a job in animation until like six years after i graduated because i stopped i, I didn't even look i like never once applied for a, a animation job it's like i graduated and it's like i guess i'm gonna make web comics now which is like the dumbest thing you can do because there's no money in it and you spend a ton of money to go to college um but uh i i have always just kind of like done what i feel like and it's uh worked out somehow uh which is like the, the worst advice you could give a young person i think um but like that's what happened to me um but that that was like what my education was um and then uh sorry what was the second part was what advice what advice um did you solve the question up yeah it, it was um um did uh what uh what inspired you to jump into this career or has it always been a dream goal of yours okay so that's it um so yeah i mean as i've always i don't know why much like anyone that just likes drawing, I just like drawing. Um, and so I, I just thought, I guess I better make cartoons. <laughs> the end. Uh, <laughs> I hope that answers that. Okay. I think we got time for one more question here before I got to get ready for the next panel. Uh, mm -hmm. So let's go with... Uh... Oh, I'm sure you, okay, from Archer 300, I'm sure you've gotten this question, but what got you into Sonic? Got me into Sonic. Um, <clears throat> so when I was a lad, um, my, uh, way back in the day, used to be able to rent video game consoles from Blockbuster Video, which... I'm going to go ahead and just assume that there are people young enough to not know what Blockbuster video. Um, <laughs> you and me, I used to do that too, so I know exactly yeah, where you're coming I, like, from. It's a place where you rent things, uh, you know, um, but you used to be able to rent a console. You would um, you used to have to, like, you'd pay for the whole thing up front as a deposit, so you'd have to, like, drop 150 bucks or whatever. Um, and then you'd take the, the console home for, like, three days, the game, play it and bring it back. Um, my brother, my older brother, 
um, rented a Genesis and Sonic 1, um, and I had, you know, no idea what it was when he brought it home. It was just, geez, I was 91, so I was um, like 7 or 8 or so. Um, and he just brought it home, and it was like, this is the first time that I'd played anything that wasn't on like the NES, right? Um, and it was like, it blew my mind at the time. There's so many colors and like Sonic was so cool. And like, I immediately, I wish I still had it, but I, I remember very distinctly the first time I did Sonic, it was just a terrible drawing that a seven year old would make of, of Sonic. And I'm pretty sure I drew his legs as being tan as, as you know, like it was like his arms are tan and his legs are tan, right? Um, and it was uh, like just, something about it just like clicked immediately for me and uh from then on it was like any time that i sat down to draw it was like i guess i'll just draw sonic like because i don't know what else to draw like i really like ninja turtles was like my big thing i was a ninja Turtle boy right before you know sonic came out and then sonic just like came in like a steamroller and was like okay bye ninja turtles <laughs> like here comes uh sonic and um it was just like he was so fun to draw that i just kept drawing him that relationship between not just liking the games and liking the cartoons and all that stuff, but liking to draw him, it just became a, this never-ending cycle where it's like even if something isn't coming out, it's like I'm just going to keep drawing Sonic because it's so much fun and that fuels the fire. Um, and that was, yeah, that was how I first happened upon him. And back then he was everywhere. It was like uh, after I had played the game, then I started noticing Sonic commercial every five seconds. Um, and then a year later, there was two TV shows, comic book series, and, and all that stuff. It was, it was hard not to be a Sonic fan. He was truly just everywhere. Uh, but that's how I found him. All right. <laughs> all right. That that was that's. This has been an interesting uh, panel that we've had today. Uh, we're getting ready to uh, move into our next panel. At, um, um, I have been granted permission to share one small thing yes. with uh, the audience today. So okay. I'll pull it up. Um, yep. Because we have like maybe like four minutes where I can talk yes. about it. Yeah, go ahead. Let me see. There we go. Okay, I'm going to pull Does that, that up. up. Yes. Oh, nice. Cool. <clears throat> um, so this was the first piece of concept art that we did for the upcoming um, Sonic Colors short. This was the background art was done by uh, my friend Gigi, not the IDW Gigi. <laughs> but, uh, a friend. Another friend, uh, Gigi, another Gigi. Gigi. Mm -hmm. uh, this is, Gigi helped with the backgrounds on the Challenge Space short, so I asked her to come back and help out with this one. Um, so she did some great concepts for Sweet Mountain for us. Characters are done by me. Um, this was uh, the first time that we were going to be using um, not frame by frame hand-drawn traditional you know animation but using um uh tweening puppet animation like um like, uh people call it flash but it's not flash anymore yeah i i i i admit when i first saw the trailer i'm like it looks kind of flashy to me <laughs> yeah it, i mean it is it, it's that style of animation um so that, and that was one of the first things that we knew we were going to have to do for this production so that's why we thought okay let's let's change some stuff here like in flash animation line art gets distorted and it like that's always a part that feels hard for me to to come to grips with when like the lines are stretching and rotating all around so let's let's try a cutout look because if we're going to do it for anything i we think it'll work well for for sonic colors which is a very light like of all the sonic games out there it's like the most lighthearted. this felt like an appropriate cutout uh direction to go for that kind of project um but yeah this is the first little piece of style work that we did for it and um that I don't, know when, I don't know when it's coming out <laughs> i don't think still don't think they've announced it yet uh but i was allowed to share this little thing with you oh all. that's so, so cool maybe you'd like to see it um and uh i hope you enjoy the thing whenever it comes out oh i'm sure we all. will I'm, I'm sure we'll we'll have a great time <laughs> watching it cool and that's it all right <laughs> Well, thank you very much for sharing that with us. And I understand you're going to have, you are going to have a meet and greet later today. Or was it tomorrow? Uh, tomorrow. Tomorrow. Tomorrow at one o'clock. Yes. <laughs> uh, I, I got so much tracking on my schedule. It's hard to keep up with everything. So, <laughs> oh, 
All right. So catch uh, Tyson with his meet and greet tomorrow at one. And we'll be got, we'll be back here in a few minutes with uh, the Sonic and Tails R panel. So everyone watching, stick with us. We'll be back in a few minutes. Thank you very much, Thanks, Tyson. Everybody. Thank you. Have a good day.